Coming up on a positive note, mother of the year goes to a mom healing from her life-saving donation. Plus, the TikTok teacher from the Bronx keeps all the kids engaged. And thank goodness he paid attention. His breathtaking rescue saved his furry best friend. Today, all of our news is good news. I'm Judea Murray, and here on a positive note, we highlight the most heartwarming stories from all around our tri-state that move and inspire us. Now, this super mom in New Jersey is inspiring everyone. She took that old saying, what's mine is yours, to an entirely new level for her kid. I think the nice thing about donating to your own child is that you get to see their results. You get to see the person be healthy. The mom and dad of four said they never second guessed the decision to donate a kidney to their seven year old son, Paul, who was born with chronic kidney disease. He's our son and we would do anything for him. And there was no thought. All we did was really just pray that one of us was a match. At just seven years old, Paul's had at least seven surgeries for his kidney disease. We found out about Paul's condition in, in utero and it's something we had to prepare for and we knew that um, there was going to be a chance that one day he would need a kidney transplant. On October 26th of 2020, Laura and Paul went into surgery. Dad Brian said this surgery was different because he was seeing off both his wife and his son. And he still remembers Paul's first words to him post-op. He had just come out of anesthesia and the first, um, the first thing he said to me was, how's mommy? That was the first conscious thing he said to me. It's been almost seven months since Laura donated her kidney to her son, Paul. And though the two had a close bond before surgery, they're even closer now. His parents are extremely excited to see his progress. And now for today's Did You Know? Did You Know May is Mental Health Awareness Month? This year's theme is You Are Not Alone. Millions of Americans live with mental illnesses, and this month is all about fighting the stigmas associated with them. You can talk to your friends and family about your own journey with mental health if you're comfortable, or you can share resources like these ones with your network. You never know whose life it could save. And our next story is about how some nurses from Bronxville in Westchester are helping their patients by improving their own mental well-being. There is something about the way sunshine it was so relaxing just being out in, you know, the nice weather. And fresh air. It makes a big difference. Can help one de-stress and relax. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing is a stark change for these nurses, says Chief Nurse Lori Walsh, who led a team of 670 nurses through Hudson Valley's first COVID case, which landed at New York Presbyterian Lawrence Hospital back in March 2020. The amount of death, I think, was the part that's so challenging because you know we see death all the time but not in the numbers that we were seeing finding ways to cope with the horrors of the pandemic is vital says Walsh it's really when we started to come out of it that staff would say to me um, I can't get it out of my mind um, I see it when I'm, I'm sleeping which is why nurses are taking breaks to walk with colleagues at the nearby Bronx River Nurses like Vanessa Elliott, who called loved ones on FaceTime, sharing precious last moments with patients. Watching all that happen, it does take a toll on you mentally. They will tell you self-care. We told them that you need to take some time to take care of yourself. Means better care for their patients. To get outdoors and get some fresh air and to have them be able to start talking about the experience. And really for some, it was to give them the opportunity to us to guide them to where they needed to get help. Nurses gave so much of themselves during the pandemic. It's time they took steps to help themselves. Steps like daily walks to help de-stress. Over the years, I've realized that some of my best teachers earned that title because of how they adapted to their students. And this past year, that was more important than ever. Teachers all around the world were coming up with wild ways to keep their kids' attention through Zoom. This teacher from the Bronx may have cracked the code. Teachers like Nicole Lahosky know all too well how difficult it is keeping kids' attention via Zoom. Class, 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 class. One day, it hit her to use TikTok to reel them in. Chicken wing, chicken wing. There you guys are. I'm using it to try to get my students' attention. I do short little mini lessons for them. No, God, please, no, no, 
no! I do, you know, funny things and it really just kind of stands out in their minds and they look forward to seeing, you know, when my next video is going to post. The Rockland woman who teaches in the Bronx says her students are participating more now. It's so important to not, you know, make a connection with your students and figure out what are their interests, right? Fourth grade, elementary school, middle school, they're all interested in TikToks. Ms. L joined TikTok so her students think she's cool. Well, she might be the coolest teacher ever. In just over a year, she went from a few followers to over 18,000. If honestly I just reached one student, I would be happy. 18,000 is amazing. The TikTok teacher has her eyes set on a new goal, 25,000. And she says when she gets there, she'll dye her hair blue. <laughs> now, it's no secret the jobs market has seen its better days, and it's not just affecting our adult hires. It's affecting our kids, too. So a young entrepreneur from Purchase, New York, took it upon herself to find internships for other kids her age amid the pandemic. We're headed to Westchester to find out more on the Interns for Good. Ellie Zimmerman wanted a summer internship back in 2018. I went out searching for opportunities to apply my photography and graphic design skills to real world experiences and I was faced with barriers everywhere I looked. Those barriers gave way to an idea. At 16, the Purchase Teen launched a nonprofit called Interns for Good, connecting tech savvy high schoolers with nonprofits and purpose driven companies. And what started with just a few hundred volunteers, it really took off when COVID-19 hit, has exploded into over 10,000 high schoolers from across the country and now the world. Amid the pandemic, homebound Gen Zers putting their tech skills to use. They could run a social media page. Really anyone our age could do that type of thing. Website design, coding, doing Google Analytics. The nonprofit reaching high schoolers like 16-year-old Annie Mokatsian. Once that pandemic hit, it was a little bit hard to find opportunities, obviously. She lives in Los Angeles and through Interns for Good, she's tutoring fifth graders and also helping run a middle school after school program all over the internet. So the fact that I'm able to do it all in the comfort of my home and directly and still helping out um, students and individual thousands around the world is really, really nice. Drive and passion. You can make a difference just by spending a few hours a week creating graphics online. Contributing to a better future. If you know a teen itching for work experience, they can head over to the Interns for Good website for more information. And it must be something in the water because another teen in our tri-state made it his job to help out his peers too. He rolls with the local step team, keeping their knees high and their spirits higher. We recruited different kids um, from all different schools all over Bridgeport. Karee Jackson has spent the past 10 years immersed in a program that's had a big effect on her life. It takes place here at Bridge Academy and it's called the New Creation Step Team. Jackson began as one of the steppers. Now she heads up the program, teaching young people both on and off the dance floor with help from her mom, the president, Marie Davis. Understood? Yes. Understood. <laughs> we want to open our own business one day. We want to open our own building and pack the place with you. Over the years, the organization has blossomed but Jackson says something truly amazing happened when 15-year-old Charlie De Los Santos joined the team. I perform for, for this team, basically. Like, I rap for the team. You know that like, we the best team, new creation, the way that we step is so sick, it's contagious. But Charlie is a lot more than a rapper. The effort y'all showed today, I am so proud of y'all, bro. Jackson says he's actually helping to lift up the entire organization with his trademark positivity. Charlie doesn't let anything get in his way. Um, he's an incredible individual. Everybody looks up to him. We made him a coach, so he, he has a leadership on the team. They look up to him in multiple ways. Jackson says the team has been doing really well, and the tenacity and good humor Charlie is known for has been a big part of their success. Try to always chase your dreams, no matter how hard life gets. Like, they never give up. One young man making many people happy every step of the way. 
no, that's right. Positivity is just so contagious. Keep up the great work, Charlie. Clearly, it isn't going unnoticed. And as May rolls out, News 12 continues to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Today, we're shining a spotlight on two officers using their position to inspire the youth in their communities. So what, DCOP? Nung Nai Wan Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Happy Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I wish you all the best and uh, good luck and fortune wherever you may be. Tawi Tiantong's parents came to the United States from Thailand. We are a family of immigrants and first generation uh, Asian American Thais. And Gloria Kim's family is from Korea. Now these first generation citizens are serving this city as members of the NYPD. Our hopes to the young generation is to show them there is more as you grow up, there's opportunities. Growing up, I thought a police officer was just a police officer. As I joined the department, I realized there's so much more that we can do. Officer Kim is also a paramedic and has been giving New Yorkers the COVID-19 vaccine. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Tian Tong is a squad commander for the NYPD ATF Joint Robbery Task Force. Both of these members of the NYPD hoping to be a role model for their children and other youth. My wife and I are both police officers, so we try very hard to teach them values, goals, reach for the stars. I just hope that I give them the tools to make the right decisions as they move on in their, in their own careers and their own lives. And if you like that, there's way more where it came from. Next week, on a positive note, we're highlighting Asian Pacific American Heritage Month with a special show dedicated to the contributions, history, and livelihood of Asian and Pacific Islander Americans in the U.S. You won't want to miss it. All right, sit tight because coming up next, hey, better, better, hey, better, better, swing. Every home run in this game is for an amazing cause. You're watching On a Positive Note. Don't go anywhere.